the Pac-12, with all the different rumors that have gone around, looks like the Pac-12 might be staying put. Now, this article over at uh, SI, this is Kirby Lee with USA Today Sports. It's uh, it's part of, uh, or excuse me, excuse me, this is uh, Kevin Borba. Now, he said uh, the 10 remaining Pac-12 schools are expected to stick together, even with all of the other rumors of other conferences like the Big 12 and the ACC looking to poach Pac-12 schools, there is an expectation that they stick together. This is basically from John Canzano, right? John Canzano, who's a Pac-12 insider, he knows everything that there is to know about everything. He expressed his own confidence in the conference, and that's based on sources. said the talk about the Big 12 conference poaching Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and Colorado is dramatically overstated. I don't blame the Big 12 for angling and dreaming about possibly adding a Pac-12 university. I don't blame conference universities for making a contingency plan, but I'm convinced that the Pac-12's remaining 10 members are galvanized right now. What makes it more interesting? Canzano asked two anonymous athletic directors from the Pac-12 about how they felt in regards to the chances of the conference remaining intact, and they both expressed more confidence than the rest of the country. Uh, While one of them said they were confident, the other added a little tease as a part of their statement, saying, feel very confident, and we have good options. Now, I don't know if that necessarily means that they are looking at adding more schools or if that means that they are looking at at just staying at 10 and that the TV money is going to come in because you these TV networks are still going to need inventory. You forget that there's FS1, CBS Sports Network, CBS, NBC, uh, all the streaming channels, etc. They all want to be involved in live streaming, in live sports, because it's the only thing that anybody really watches live anymore. So if you are going to be able to get some kind of a deal that would pay more than what you already make, or even the same as you're already making, remember they made about $20 million last year. That was down from $33 million per school the year before. If you can still stay in that 20 to 25 range, do you have to do anything? Like, would it be considerably more if you were to go join with the Big 12 or if you were to do some kind of an expansion deal with the ACC? Probably not. Uh, I, I don't think that just going and moving across the country and setting up to where you have to travel some crazy distances just to play ball games is going to change the amount of money that you're going to make. It would make more sense to stay regional and just continue to move along at the same pace that you are. No, you're not going to make the same as the Big 12 school, or excuse me, the Big 10 schools or the SEC schools. You're just not. But is there anything that you can do that will enhance your university? Because if you do move and say you join with the ACC, uh, okay, so if you were going to get $25 million per school to stay by yourself, you could move to $30 million per school to go join the ACC. What is the benefit. All that travel, all the different troubles that you're going to have to go through to make that work, is it worth the extra $5 million per year? Like, at the end of the day, money is not everything, right? I, I think we can all agree on this. Uh, there are other topics that go along with this. David Hale, of course, ACC insider for ESPN, he said, uh, adding new teams or opening up the TV contract for the ACC would not void the existing grant of rights. They are separate documents. If new teams join the ACC, they would have to sign the same grant of rights as everyone else, same for departing teams, unless more than 50% leave. This is a big, big thing because uh, this thing runs through 2036, right? Uh, 14 years from now, the ACC owns the broadcast rights for all of their members until then. This is a huge obstacle. Like, you're going to have to get every single, you're going to have to get more than 50% of the teams, so eight out of the 14, to agree to tear up these grant of rights so that they can go and try and make more money elsewhere. And I don't think that there's eight teams that would be able to do that. I think what the ACC has right now is actually pretty decent. It's a good deal for ESPN, and for the majority of the ACC, it's a good deal for them as well. If you're the Pac 12, or any of those schools that are remaining, do you want to go join the ACC in this merger of sorts and join in to where you get your rights locked away for another 14 years after you've already seen all the mess that's going on? I don't think so. I think staying put is probably your best option here. That that grant of rights is such a huge thing. 
such a huge thing. And as far as the the merger between those two, uh, Brandon Marcello said this. Jason Shear from uh, Wildcat Authority, he has uh, has talked about this. Um, he said predicts an ACC partnership. Wouldn't be surprising if that happens, only because it's the worst option. Um, you know, he, he's been all over this as far as different meetings from Arizona joining the Big 12, et cetera. But Brandon Marcello said, every ACC administrator I've talked to this week is wary of the idea of a Pac-12 partnership adding any value to the ACC, and at best, a couple are indifferent, but nothing on paper has pre- uh, has been presented yet to membership. I don't foresee that becoming a thing. I don't think there's enough money out there. Like, right, it, this doesn't that seem the same to all of you? And I would love for you to join me in the comments on YouTube. I want to know what you think, uh, or jump in the chat, or whatever, if you're watching the show live. But I, I'm curious... All of these different moves, a Big 12, Pac-12 merger, or the Big 12 taking in four Pac-12 schools, or the ACC taking in six of the AC, or of the Pac-12 schools, what does that add to a television contract? Like, maybe you can find a way to make the ACC network work, and that would be different. I don't know that the Pac-12 would have to sign a grant of rights in order for that to happen, but ESPN could maybe use that in their leverage with the Pac-12 to set up some kind of a new TV contract, et cetera, to where it would make more sense, right? Where you don't have to have them on ESPN Plus or you don't have to have them on one of your main broadcast channels more frequently. You could have them on the ACC network, which would then turn into uh, whatever you want to call it, the Coast to Coast Network or the whatever sports network. There's a way to do that because the ACC network as it stands right now not super profitable, not great. That's There are ways to work around this, but I don't foresee a lot of additional expansion coming along. That's the way that I see it going right now. Uh, it was fun with all the rumors and everything else, but moving conferences is a humongous deal. Now, obviously, it was huge for UCF and Cincinnati and Houston and BYU to be able to jump up to the Big 12 because that's another step up the ladder. But those four schools were never going to be invited to the Big Ten or the SEC. You're still moving around in the underbelly, which I know sounds ridiculous. But that's that's where you're moving around is you're you're going between conferences that are not going to make a ton of money anyway compared to what the two biggest conferences are going to make. So it's all kind of negligible. It it doesn't necessarily matter. Now, it did matter for UCF and them because you could be jumping from $7 million a year up to, who knows, $20 million? $15 million? I mean, you, at, at least you will be doubling your income from your sports rights, your media rights. So that's a, that's a fairly, fairly big deal. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.